What is going on guys here with the At Games Legends Pinball in today's mod what we are going to be doing is we are going to be taking this HDMI USB board and we are going to be taking it out and relocating it to the inside of the cabinet. In my opinion it just looks bad and awful with cables coming in the top sticking out, cables everywhere, USB sticks sticking in. I just want to get it eliminated. We will have holes left over but the plan is to go ahead and you know cover this up with some vinyl just make it look seamless like this right here was never a thing. I'm sure, you know, from a design standpoint, they did that just for the mere fact to ease of access, putting your USB sticks in and that. But I see it time and time again in the community that people honestly wish that it was relocated to the back or elsewhere so you don't stick them up here. I know there's other mods that people have done, and I've also rec um, suggested to people that you could get 90-degree HDMI and USB to ribbon cable, put them in, have the ribbon cable run underneath of the back box to give you that almost um, disappearing look, but they're still there, still kind of ugly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, get rid of those, move those to um, the back, to the inside, where in my opinion, they originally should have been all, all the time. So I'm going to go ahead, if you want to do this modification, if you've been thinking about how to how to do this. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how we can go ahead and move this. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to pull the ALP out so we can have access to the back. The first thing we got to do is we got to take this back box off. So I'll show you about going into that. I know a lot of you already know how to do that, but we're going to jump into that for the new people. And one thing that I've done on mine also on the feet is I've taken um, carpet sliders. They also have sliders for hard floors, but I put them, they 3M stick to the feet and we can easily look at this easily just slide this thing around no problem at all and it was easy like pressing that easy button at the office supply store so you know if you want an easy way to move this thing around in that five dollars i think it was five or six dollars for four of them you can get them down you know home depot lowe's your local hardware store um, walmart amazon anywhere but they are simple easy just stick on and allows you to easily move your machines around. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull this out. We're gonna relocate the camera to the back and we're gonna jump into the back. All right guys, so we're here at the back of the ALP and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two panels off. And so just wanted to quickly show you what I do with the key because a lot of people you know, they've done a couple things. You either put hooks back here or something like that to put the key so it doesn't get lost. But, heck, the easiest thing to do is if you, you know, here's the key out. If you just put it in and do a slight turn, it's not coming out and the panel doesn't come out either. So, that's something you can do. You're not going to lose the key. It's going to stay there. You can even do it down here at this one too. Slightly turn. As you can see, it's in. It's not coming out. The panel's not coming out. So that's just a quick thing that you can do if you've been trying to figure out what to do with the key. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to take the bottom off here. Set that to the side. Then we're going to go ahead and up here. Take this one off. And set this to the side. And now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and unplug so I have the version one that just has the 30 pin EDP cable here. Um, people, I think starting in wave four, maybe five, they have the HDMI signal board in it. Ours doesn't have that, but you just want to go ahead and disconnect that. Um, so we're going to go ahead, disconnect the lights and speakers, push this through. So it's down there. Go ahead and very carefully, if you have version one, we're going to go ahead and pull the black tabs out. We're going to go ahead and pull that cable out there. And go ahead and just put it down inside of the ALP. And now we'll go ahead and pull these screws out. Okay, we got all the bolts out. We're going to stick those on the side. I'm going to stick these right over here. Keep everything together where you know where it's at. And then we're gonna go ahead and we are going to pull the back box off. Remove that from there. Go ahead and just gonna put it down on the side. Like there. All right. So now we go ahead and bring the camera a little lower. 
you're going to want to have yourself a Phillips screwdriver. This panel here, there's two screw, Phillips screws, one here, one here. We're going to go ahead and take those out. All right, so I'm just going to leave the screws in there. And I'm just going to put this on the side with my panels. So now we have access to this whole board here. There are two holes in the sides here, one here and one here. Yours might have screws in there, mine do not. So again, yours may have a screw here and a screw here on the side, but mine do not. But there are holes looking like there should have been. But go ahead and put the screwdriver on the side. And now I'm gonna go ahead and and actually make sure your cable's not getting caught. We can actually go ahead and lift this piece out like that. And we're not going to pull it all the way out. We're going to pull it up. There are slots inside here that this slides down into. So that just, you know, kind of comes out. To move this, you know, we don't have to take this the panel off. We don't have to take this, the rails off or anything like that. It's just simply removing that piece and then pulling this up. So now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to bring the camera around to this side here. There are screws, four total, that are going to allow us to take this panel off. Um, before we do that, actually, you have the HDMI cable here, and then you also have the USB cables here. We want to go ahead and we want to pull this out of the board like that. All right. And we also have the volume here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull this out of the board like that there. And in case some of you guys do, there is a plastic piece I should be able to pull this. Yeah, there. All right, let's go ahead and I'm gonna bring the camera down a little bit so you can get a better view. Right in here where the HDMI is at, there's a black tab. You wanna go ahead and lift that black tab up like that. And so then the HDMI cable, again, you wanna be very gentle with this. All right, you can pull it out like that, all right? This. 30 pin that goes to your back glass, you can leave that in. The one thing I wanted to show you over here, this is where the volume controls were at. Sometimes if you pull this out, this tab right here will actually come out with it. Like this. Right? And that's okay. You didn't break it. Right? So this just goes ahead and slides back on those pins. Right? So you have these little holes here. All right. So you just want to line them up with the holes on with the pins on the board and then this piece will just slide back on like that. And then this will just clip back in. But you want to make sure that right the cable right there that has a little nub that that's facing inwards and that's how it's going to slide on. All right. So and just to show you, I'll pull this back off. You'll have, you can see right here, a little notch in it. That notch is gonna be facing inwards towards the board. So just in case it does come off, now you know how to put it back on. You know where it goes. You didn't break anything. No need to worry. Just, you know, take your time, be gentle with everything. It just easily slides back on. All right, so we have our volume disconnected. We have our HDMI disconnected and we also have this right here, the USB that was in here that's pulled out and disconnected also. All right. So next we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera around to the front side so I can show you the four screws to fully get that metal bezel with the HDMI and USB ports off. Okay guys, we are now at the front of this. One real quick thing I want to point out when you're looking in yours, these two white strips, of Velcro that I have on mine. You will not have those on yours. I already, 
you know, went through this mod and tested it out to make sure it worked. And I am going to be using Velcro to hold it inside of the back here. So I just want to point that out. So if you're looking at this and you're like, mine doesn't have this. What's going on? Why does his have? Well, that's why I put it on there already previously. So I'm going to show you that a little bit later on in this video. But yeah, again, I put this on previously. It doesn't come there stock. All right, so now jumping in to the four, four screws total. We have a screw here. One, one screw on the other side, two, one screw here, three, and one screw here being four. So you want to just take your Phillips and you want to go ahead and just remove those four screws. Also, just be careful from your screwdriver slipping out of your hand and falling onto your glass. I know it's not a hard, you know, far fall. A lot of screwdrivers have rubber ends, but you want to try to keep anything from falling onto the glass, possibly putting any, you know, hairline pressure cracks in it or anything like that. All right, so we got the four screw out. Now, you just want to be careful. Slowly pull your cables through. You have another, your other cable over here, pull that through. And now we have the full entire bar here fully out. So now, two things for this bar here, because we want to take this, you know, this button, these lights, the USBs, the HDMI, this is all one board. It's in, here's the back of it. It's in this box here. This box. And then, you know, this is your volume over here. But, so, what we're going to want to do is you have a little tiny itty bitty screw here. An itty bitty screw here. We're going to go ahead and take those out. And then, we have one screw here, one screw here, and one screw here. Now, you don't want to fully take them all the way out, these ones here. These ones up here, you do want to take them fully out. These down here, we're only going to be loosening them. And the reasoning for that is because if we do not loosen these, you will not be able to slide this out because these ports, and especially this button, is sticking out, right? So you can see it's, you know, above. So what we do is we go ahead and we loosen these three screws. And then that allows us to then, we can push this in, push these ports in lightly. And that'll allow this back to push out. So then we can go ahead and then slide this off. So we're going to get our screwdriver. Go ahead, unscrew these two little ones here. And depending on the Phillips head that you have on, you may need to use a smaller Phillips head than what you had for your bigger screws. So just to keep that in mind. So we're going to go ahead and keep those on the side. Take the second one out here. All right. All right, that's out. Let's stick this on the side. And now, as I said, we're going to go ahead and loosen these three screws. All right. Not taking them all the way out. Just unscrewing them so they're a little bit lifted above there. Then we have one more here. All right, that's coming out. See it coming up. All right. And now what you can do is flip it over and you can push in the channel button here and you can kind of, I don't know if you could see that, but they kind of pushed in words. If we look here, you can see that's lifted up there now, which is fine. You can then take your, you know, fingernail or your finger lightly push inside of there just to push it in a little bit more. So now you can see the channel button is actually inside that now it's not lifted out. Whatever you do, don't take screwdrivers or anything that can damage or anything like that and just start pushing into there. I know some people 
suggest and I don't know why, but you know, just take a flathead screwdriver and lightly push it in there. Like, don't do that. Please don't do that. All right, so that's inside there. And now, since that's pushed in, this is gonna be, look at that, easy, easy. Sliding out, boom, easy, boys. So there we go. Yep, it just slides in that groove. So we'll go ahead and put that back on the side here. And what we wanna go ahead and do is then take this, it's, you know, it's lifted up. You wanna push this back down like that. Double check your channel button that it still clicks. Because the reason why I say that is if you loosen this too much and you push it out, there is a plastic piece in there that just sits inside, inside of two um, nubs, which is when this pushes in, then those nubs hold it and then the middle, the middle piece pushes in towards the tack switch inside. So you just wanna make sure that's all set in there and fully working before you button it back up. If that happens to get loose, you're going to have to fully take all these out, and then you're going to have to reset the um, reset the plastic piece inside there in the nubs. So we're going to go ahead and tighten all these back up. All right. We don't want anything loose. Tighten that back up. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten this last screw up like so all right and what I'm going to do is because I want to keep those two small screws that we took out of here I'm just going to go ahead and put them back in here and just screw them back in so they're there we don't lose them you know we don't have to keep them in a baggie or anything like that um, elsewhere they're just going to stay in here with this and these screws are so small there we go all right again you know guys just take your time no you don't need to rush don't make mistakes you know you're dealing with these even though these cat cables are fragile they're also you know they're also a little strong like you know they can get a little bends and you know how they go and stuff like that but even though they're you know decent cables and still easy to damage them so you just want to take your time with that all right so screws are in there so now it kind of comes down to like how do you want to put this piece inside here is kind of what's going to be your next thing you want to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and button this back up. So you want to go ahead and take this, take the volume cable, run it back through the hole so it's inside the machine here. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the screws, put them back on, and get this all button back on here and again you know now we have holes up here but again we can take a piece of vinyl get something go all the way across you know cut it out so where the volume buttons are sticking through and you know just eliminate the wording in this up here from being there all right so let's go ahead and uh, find that other screw that fell inside there it is I'm going to go ahead and speed through this, screwing this back on. All right, and as I'm putting this fourth one in here, one thing that just been, did pop into my mind that I want to let you guys know, just to put it out there, this whole piece right here, whatever you do, don't start yanking it up and you know, trying to force it. Be gentle with it, guys. You have cables and wires and everything in there. If you want to take a picture of the back here, you know, unplug everything, take a picture of it so you know how it all goes. If you, that makes you feel more comfortable, by all means, do that. But, you know, you don't want to start yanking this up. It's, 
you know, it'll slide back in there. It comes up enough to where it can tilt and rest there. But you don't want to pull it up any higher and mess with anything more because you have the ribbon cables and the one, it's kind of pretty tight if you keep trying to come up, it's going to be the ribbon cable for your play field. So you don't want to be, you know, jerking this around and trying to get it up and manhandling it and forcing it. No, let it work with you. Just take it easy. Be careful. So I just wanted to throw that out there. All right, so we have that. That's all buttoned back up. We're going to go ahead and just drop this back into place. Yes, I still have my plastic on. I'm leaving it on forever. No, I'm just kidding. Now, after we uh, finish doing stuff, I'm going to take it off. All right. So that's in there now. And if you guys did have screws down in the sides, make sure you put those back in. Again, I did not have screws. And so now it kind of comes down to how do you guys want to put this in here? You're kind of limited because, you know, you have these cables you can't really do much i'm going to show you what i did there was some other modifications in here with what i had to do in that but i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to bring the camera up get a better angle inside of here and then we will get this last little bit going for you okay guys so we are now looking inside the top of the unit here and we are going to be installing this inside of here I know some people have installed theirs in here. Again, there's not much room and much you can do in here. The biggest thing is with this cable here, to notice the arrow has to go in, arrow side out that way. So depending on where you put this at, your cable needs to be sure that it's going in. And one of the things that um, also make sure that this cable is fully receded it was kind of sticking out a little bit on mine i just kind of pushed it back in there so you just want to make sure that that's properly in there all right so again with this cable it's important that arrow facing out so if you do you know stick it this way you you can have the cable you know there's the arrow you can have the cable come around and behind it that way because again the arrow is facing out right and again you want to make sure that this cable is not all the way over here you know you want it lined up with that what i'm actually going to do is be putting it over here it's going to go underneath of this and it's going to sit up against this now i already did this but there is some modification if you do choose to stick it over here where I have mine there is a slight modification that needs to be done and it has to do with this little wood block underneath of this there's a little wood block down here that little wood block is when you have your back panel for down here and you lock it the lock comes up over top of this piece here Right, and I can actually just show you real quick. All right, let me get the key out. All right, so we have our back box. I'm gonna have to pull the camera back a little bit. Bear with me. All right, so, all right, we have our panel. Panel's going in place. I need to put the key in and all right, so panel's in place. And so you can see the lock here. When you turn it, it comes up over, right, over that. And so actually, you can kind of see the wood, the wood piece right here. All right. Actually, if I bring this, let me lock it. If I bring the camera down even more, down inside here, there we go. All right, so there's this wood piece here. You can already see that I've chipped away at it, but it actually comes to about over here. And so I cut away this. And what I used to do that is I used this right here 
chisel. This uh, chisel right here. And the type of you know wood that this is, this kind of just goes right through it. So, you know, again, you're going to want to take your time. I didn't have to take anything out. I just use this light, this chisel here, and I kind of, you know, because of how sharp this is. Now, this was a new chisel. If you have older chisels and that, it's going to be harder. You can get a exacto knife or a box cutter and just start scoring and taking bits away of that. Um, but yeah, it's um, almost like a kind of like a paper. It'll it'll just start coming apart. All right, so yeah, so going back to this, I did cut away because it did come about over here. And on this side over here, you can see that white, this white plastic um, L bracket. Man, I was having a mind blank. That little white, my, uh, that little white L bracket right here. So I have it going against that. So that sticks out a little ways. Um, and so it doesn't allow it to be flush all the way. But yeah, so, and one of the other things that we're gonna have to, have to do, because if you noticed, when we lock, unlock, it's coming on this side. It's going to be getting in the way. So we're gonna actually go ahead and flip this lock to where it is on this side, on the left side, and it locks up and down on the left side. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's real, real simple to do. We're gonna go over to the table and I'm gonna show you how to reverse or switch this lock so it's coming up on this side rather than this side. All right, guys, we have the back panel here for the play field. And if you remember, we want to take this piece right here and currently in its unlocked state, we need to be sitting on this side. So when we lock it, it rotates this way instead of this way. All right, so I'll flip this around. So the first, first thing we need to do is take this nut off and this nut is a size 7 sixteenths. All right, size so 7 sixteenths. So you can use one of these, you can use a socket set. If you don't have a socket set, you can get a pair of pliers and easily come on here, put it on, rotate it off. I'm not gonna use the pliers because I don't like chancing stripping the outside of the nut. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here. And what I'm gonna do is hold on to this piece here, put this on, go ahead and Start rotating it all right and one thing to keep in mind about these nuts is they do have a piece of nylon on the inside they're called nylon locking nuts and so even though you start getting it loose you're not going to be able to just take your fingers and start twisting it off so you're still going to need to keep loosening it and then at a point it will get even looser and then you can then take your hands and take it off all right so, this little modification that we're doing to this lock is super simple, super easy. These locks are super easy to mess with and simple. All right, so we have our nut. We'll put that on the side. All right, and then so we're going to take this piece and that's going to come off. All right, and so... This piece here is what's going to need to be flipped. So if you look, kind of just to get an idea how it works, there's a metal piece right here. And so when you turn that, it stops it. So that's unlocked. I mean, that's locked. That's unlocked. All right. So you want to have the key in the locked position to where you can take the key out. Right? So take the key out. And then what you're going to want to do is take this piece off like that and then you're going to want to flip it like that so now when we take the key and put the key in this piece now the key now goes this way rather than 
clockwise we're now turning the key counterclockwise all right and so the key being in the locked position to where the key can come out so when I say the key is in the locked position that's I'm referring to this piece where the tab will be up so you can take the key out all right so we just go ahead because we want to make sure this is facing the correct way it's going to be up like that and so now if we take the key and we rotate it there unlocked going to the opposite side that we want all right and then I'm just going to go ahead and put the key in the this in the unlocked position so the key sitting inside then we're going to take our nut put the nut back on like that and you can hand tight it hand tighten it to a certain point and then go ahead and grab whatever tool you used to get the nut off originally I'm going to hold on to this piece here and then we're going to put this on and just tighten it all the way back up Tight. All right. Don't go real hard. It doesn't need to be real hard, but you just want it tight where this isn't flopping around in that. So that's solid there. And then we just do a test up. Now there are sometimes this might be like a little more that way. You just have to kind of, you know, hold on to the key and then turn it to where when it's in the locked position, it's like that. All right. And then we just turn the key. All right. Easy, guys. See, this is so simple. These locks are so, so simple. They consist of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. Because this little ring right here is a separate piece. So, well, if you want to count the key, it consists of eight pieces. But yeah, it's simple, super simple to take these apart, and they're so um, universal with different ways they can go and flipping them and turning them. Um, but yeah, again, just take the nut off, take the brass tab off, put the key to where it's in the locked position to where you can take the key out. Then you take that little brass piece, flip it a full uh, 180 degrees, and then go ahead and put that back on, put the nut back on, and then we're good to go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show you on the ALP with it going in and going the correct way. And then getting the controller board put in the correct spot where we're going to go ahead and put it. All right, guys, so let's hop over to the ALP. Okay, so now that we have the lock mechanism turned the correct way, I'll go ahead and... Tilt the camera up a little bit, put this panel in place, like so, alright, and then so, if we go ahead and push it, now you can see the, the lock coming up to that side now, the way we need to, so it's no longer over here where it's going to be in the way, so we are good on that, alright, remove the panel, get as much light going on the inside as possible, all right, and so we have our control box here with all of this. And so I'm using the Velcro, Velcro strips here. And the Velcro that I used is this Scotch reclosable fasteners Velcro. It came in the strips. And so sure this is going to be very basic for a lot of people watching this but what I did real quick I just took these two pieces and this thing's not moving anywhere using these but it's like this you can decide which side you want to put on what doesn't really matter but I went ahead took off the backing of this stuck it on here did the same thing for this side and then once these were both on then I took the other backing off of each and then I you know, lately took it and put it inside where I exactly wanted it, and then push. You don't want to, you know, go down in there and start pushing around. You want to be able to, in case it's not set right where you want it exactly. Um, oh, sorry, I had it upside down. So, yeah, 
going in this way. Um, so yeah, I put it in there, and then once I had it in exactly the spot I wanted it to, then I started, you know, I really pressed against this, and I put some pressure on these inside there for about 30 to 40 seconds, and then, you know, then you want to just kind of have them sit in there. You don't want to start pulling it off right away, because they will start peeling. It could peel them off, but yeah, so that's the one that, I mean, you can use any type of Velcro, but that's just what I used, what I had on hand. And one of the things that just is popping in my head now that's probably going to get a lot of questions is the channel button and not really having access to it. Once it's in here, I mean, I could come in the back and I'll have access right here to push it. But what I'm actually going to do, and let me just go ahead and do this so you can, you can see in case anybody wants to relocate the button so what you would if you want to re a good way to relocate is to get another tactile switch and the one that's in here you could actually solder two cables to it and then you can run it anywhere in your ALP with another switch and then you can have it somewhere else so I'm going to actually be running this channel button up to the front underneath of the ALP and up there. So I'll just go ahead and if you guys want to, you know, fast forward through this part, um, you can, if you're interested in seeing, I'm just going to actually take this whole piece out and then so you can actually see the whole control board. Let me just stick these on the side here. Don't lose these screws. Um, I know some people totally got rid of this housing. I've seen some people, um, and then they just have the uh, board sitting inside. I'm going to keep it in the housing. I personally like the housing, and it made it easier for me to stick it. No, it's not going anywhere. All right, and so there's a total of three screws. So we'll go ahead and take those out. All right, and so once that's out, and depending on the size of your Phillips, you may need to get a smaller Phillips. I just happen to have one that works on all the screws. All right, so now that 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 is out the three screws are out we'll go ahead and flip it over and you can just you know push the button here you can see as I push it in it starts pushing it away I'll take my finger and right in where the HDMI is at I'll push that on the inside that as well please don't take like a screwdriver or anything and shove it inside to get it out but yeah there and then again you know wasn't much this pops off like that and then you have access to the inside here where the board's at. And, you know, you just want to be careful with it. Go each end, slowly kind of, you know, rock it out a little bit. All right. Then I'm, I'm holding on both sides here and then pushing down with my fingers. On that to slowly get the board out. All right, board's coming out. Okay, the board is out. All right, so here's the board. All right, here's the tack switch for the channel. And so what I'm going to be doing is these right here, right, I'm going to be soldering a cable on each one, and you just don't want to, you know, it has four there, and I believe one is the positive, one's the negative, the other two are just supports, um, sometimes other ones are, you have two positive, two negatives, it all depends on how it's set up, but you can get a reader, you can put it on the positive on one, the positive on the other, press the button, and then if the be if the meter beeps, you know that's getting signal, um, and that's how you can test that. Um, so I don't know off the top of my head which ones it is, so I can't tell you. Um, but yeah, that's basically what you'll do. You'll just solder. And I believe somebody else in the community did already make a video on which ones to solder, and he soldered a bun up to the front. But yeah, I'm just gonna do that. And then what I'm gonna end up doing is just having a slight cutout in this plastic to where that cable 
to where the wire can run out of the housing. Because, again, I'm going to keep it in the housing. All right. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to button this back up. And after I get a button back up, we'll be right back and finish getting this installed into our ALV. One thing I did want to mention, um, you have the button here, right? So this is the button here that has these two end pieces here. And on the inside there, it would be kind of hard to see, but there are two little nubs. So you want to make sure that this is set in those nubs because it'll keep it from moving. And basically how it works is these are held down and this pushes up and it pushes that. All right. So yeah, you just want to make sure that this is, this button is set, is seated correctly and properly in here before you button it all back up together. That way it does properly click the tactile switch. Now that we have it buttoned back up, and I know earlier I mentioned when I was talking about soldering the wire to the tack switch, that's right here, there's actually enough wiggle room, enough room between the board and this opening here, so I should be able to have it running and have the wire running out of here and not have to do any like slight cut into the plastic here to get it to come out. Um, so. I should be able to do that. If not, you know, having a slight cut here or something like that isn't going to be the end of the world. It's going to be easy to do. All right. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I happened to see that when I was buttoning it back up. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move this EDP out of the way. This is going to come down here. All right. And this is going to go all the way against that bracket in there. All right. So we have that. And again, this Velcro is so strong. I could have probably just did one strip in the center. But yeah, that's not going anywhere. All right. So now that that's in there, you know, we could take this cable here, the little nubs on it little nubs. Go ahead and bring the camera down a little bit. All right. These little nubs right here. All right. It can only go in one way. They're going to be facing towards the back of the cab. So little nubs going this way. That's going to go in here. Like that. All right. We also, you know, have our volume buttons here. All right. That's going to go plug into here with the little nubs facing inwards. All right. So that's going in there. All right. And now we have our HDMI cable. And again, it has on the side the arrow facing down. The arrow is going to be able to be seen from the back. So this is just literally going to come over and it's going to go into the slot where it came out of. All right. And then once it's in the slot, go ahead and put it in. Again, you know, just take your time. Be gentle with it. All right. So once the cables in there you want to go ahead and push down on that latch and you can give it a slight a very light you know kind of pull up and see that it's in there it's not loose or anything like that all right so that's all in there that's all together that'll just come down inside there and then you're going to want to take the top panel. All right. So we have our top panel here. All right. So you have this piece right here is going to be closest to the back. All right. So you don't want this piece closer to the front. That'll be backwards. So once that's the case, you know, I have my screw there. Screw in this side here. 
just gonna go ahead and push it back in. This will, um, again, mine didn't have in these screw holes, there's a screw hole here and a screw hole there, but there were no screws to hold this in. Yours, again, as I said earlier, yours might have these screws, but once we put this platform down inside, it'll push this back forward and keep it where it needs to be. So since I don't have the screws, I'll just put it in leaning this way first, push that back, and then we can drop it right in place, and then go ahead and get your screwdriver, and just bind it back up. All right, and so there we have it. We have our board inside all ready to go and to connect our HDMI cable, our USBs to it. And here it is, guys, the final location of our HDMI USB ports. And as Bobby Vu would say, looking clean like a mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would not disagree at all. It is looking clean with our HDMI back here, USB 3, USB 2, and then our switch button right here, easy to access. So until I get this relocated, I'll just leave this open here. And for any reason, I need to reach back here and press this. It's easy to get to. And then of course the lights, not worry about the lights. We know what mode we're in. So I don't need to look at those lights. The only other thing I'm thinking about doing as I'm looking at this top bezel is relocating those volume buttons. I just want to get rid of all those buttons up top and make it look clean, make it look nice, make it look seamless. So relocate those buttons. I have yet to look at the board for the volume, so I'm not exactly sure how that's set up yet, but I can't imagine it's gonna be that difficult to relocate those. It will be even more cool is if we could add a turn knob and tap a turn knob into that and, you know, turn one way volume up, turn the other way volume down. So I'm gonna look into that. If I come up with something like that, I'll make a quick video on relocating the volume. So I hope this video is helpful. I hope it was informative give you guys some ideas. I know you, there's not much in the fact of relocating this inside of here because of the ribbon cables and how it needs to go, but just give you guys some idea and see how, you know, fairly easy it is to relocate this if you choose to do that. So that's going to wrap up this video on relocating this. If you like the video, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. If you want to, go ahead and subscribe. We will be making more videos. I will be doing another video showing how I'm going to be connecting my HDMI and USB cables up to this. So you don't want to miss that. I know a lot of people have done different things such as drilling a hole in the back of their ALP, drilling a hole in the bottom, running the cables in it. Um, some people have just left this open, just run the cables in. Other people have even just left their... Um, panel to the back box open and running the cables up underneath through this hole here and running them in and we're not going to do any of that we're actually going to be adding a wall plate onto this tapping that into it and then running probably about six hdmi cables into here of course the one for our otg but also because i have a setup that will use five to six hdmi ports and then of course our two usb so we'll go ahead and add that plate with all those couplers into there and so again you don't want to miss that video if you want to see that give you guys some other ideas and so again appreciate you guys thank you for your time thank you for your support hope you enjoyed the video and until next time happy modding